Please welcome to the stage Michael Lazaro and Ron Ferris. That was not the music we had selected. No, no, it was not. To walk out. Um, <laughs> so it's great to be here. Good to see everyone. Um, the, we have a phenomenal marketer up here. I don't know how many people know Ron Ferris. We've been working together since 1952, <laughs> since the first uh, Virgin launch, which was diapers, right? It was Virgin diapers. Way back when. Um, so why don't you introduce yourself before we jump in? Sure. Um, hi, all. I'm Ron Ferris. I run brand marketing at Virgin Mobile. I've been there about eight years and basically um, manage all the touch points, creative touch points, as well as de depth of engagement across social and traditional uh, everything. Fun Virgin guy. And so, you know, when I say one of the most creative, he's invented celebrities, he's, you know, entered a space which is, you know, the mobile phone business, which has incredibly well-funded competitors. I don't know if you've seen the marketing budgets of like, these other guys. Um, where are we today with social? Yeah, um, right now it's, it's, everybody says it's always a fascinating time of where we're at right now and how things are, social is just this almost annoying buzzword that we hear, but really what's, what is truly phenomenal is that you're moving away from this traditional sense of marketing, which when we've talked about before is like studio-based marketing, which is all about I'll make a commercial, I'm gonna make an appointment with my audience to see it on Modern Family, and we'll you know, see where it goes from there. And, and that's really shifted to this world of conversations and building a brand voice, which is more of kind of this, more feels more like a newsroom or like um, you know, cheering for a presidential campaign, which is more about making headlines, it's more about contributing to a community, getting your voice out there, establishing a voice, and making sure that um, you've got something intriguing to say. And the beauty is any brand these days can have a voice on social, brands are right now becoming kind of what your almost annoying Facebook friend is and that they're posting um, as frequently and as, it really is just about like, what do they have to say that's important and it better not be some sale. You know? And so not everyone has such an awesome brand, right? Virgin's very aspirational. You got this incredible kind of leader. How do you operationalize a lot of what you talk about? Because I hear you talk about it and most companies just aren't set up to do that today. It's funny, when you look at um, the world of social, of the people who they are, they, they tend to be these kind of rogue community managers. It started out where they would just kind of post on Twitter because none of their bosses or their bosses' bosses knew what the hell Twitter was. So they would kind of build the voice just by speaking as their own personality, which would be the brand's personality. Now that a lot of that stuff is getting formalized, people are starting to pay attention. And, but there's still a huge gap between the people who run social at a lot of companies and you know, the, the, the committee, if you will, or the, or the executive committee of people who greenlight the funding for these initiatives. So a lot of operationalizing it is now trying to figure out if you're gonna build a conversation, what are the metrics to gauge conversation? And it used to be you know, 1.0 was all about likes, number of likes, get me to a million likes. But I mean, for me it's all about the de a sustained conversation, depth of engagement. You know, I, I saw like, I, I think two days ago, I was seeing like on Twitter, everyone saying, or Digiday had something about the Red Bull jump, saying that like, you know, Red Bull could teach people about, what, what Red Bull can teach you about content marketing. And I'm like, yeah, if we all had a dude that we could throw to the edge of space and launch him off, to have them pay attention to our salsa, yeah, great. That Virgin would, Galactic, yeah. right? And, and frankly, we also do, yeah. They, we're, we're well, when does, <laughs> by the way, like, I don't wanna like take this in a new direction, but Virgin Galactic is actually sending people into space at some point soon, right? So it's it's suborbital space, so it's, I can be weightless and I can see the curvature of the Earth, but I'm not in orbit. And you don't kind of wanna be in orbit, because then you kinda can't come back, so. That's you, a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay, well, back to social media. Um, <laughs> When you look at getting funding, what are the practical, what's the practical advice you would tell people? Because the stuff we first started doing together, Ron comes into our office, it was by Penn State, he's like, I'm inventing a celebrity, a celebrity couple, he had casting calls, and ended up you know, getting these actors, 
kind of on the Today Show, like billions of impressions, and they were crazy ideas. Like they started dating real celebrities and they were in like people. How do you fund something like that? How do you get people to say, yeah, that's a great idea? Yeah, that was hard. Uh, we had, when we did, um, something like that was super ambitious in wanting to, we didn't have money to go after um, typical celebrity. The, the logic we had behind a ridiculous campaign like that is that we, we invented a celebrity couple named, a guy named Spencer and a girl named Sarah, and we invented Spara, um, this couple that we ended up kind of hacking our way into pop culture because we couldn't afford media buys on TMZ, and we knew from our segmentation studies and behavioral st psychographic studies that our segment was addicted to TMZ and all celebrity gossip on their smartphones. So we, in, so I think finding the lowest common denominator of metrics that could, that could make them not think, make them not concerned about how ridiculous the campaign was and really focus on the metrics that would lead to increasing awareness and consideration of the brand were probably, was our way in. But I mean, that was- I'm glad you found the lowest common denominator. Really low. For the lowest <laughs> common denominator program ever, which is celebrity. <laughs> right. Because highbrow metrics would not have worked with that. No, I mean, I think when we looked at um, these, right now, when we, we decided once we, we were successful in building a brand in the celebrity couple by building headlines, by basically put, making them date other people, making them, putting them out there, who wore it best, all this slimy stuff that we did to get this couple out there, we then realized, well, if we could do that with a celebrity couple, a, a waiter and a waitress in, in LA, why couldn't we do it with the Virgin Mobile brand? So that's what launched this whole concept of newsroom marketing, which is about having your traditional advertising at the center with your true marketing message and your offer, and all the social noise around it would be a conversation around getting people to think about the traditional message. So if it were a political candidate, you would have an ad for the presidential candidate saying, you know, Ron Ferris is for gun control, but all the social noise would be leaking these horrible photos of school shootings saying, shouldn't we have someone in office that should be for gun control? Except in our world of telco, it would be at the center of the message would be Virgin Mobile gives you unlimited web and data uh, plus 300 voice minutes, which doesn't seem like a lot, but the social noise around it would be, dude, voice is dead. You must be old, you know? So that whole thing really worked. And when you start to orient it in that language and say what we're trying to do is fuel a conversation and share a lot of what our message was, then it gets to things like, okay, well, what metric would you want to gauge by? Well, number of shares. And through platforms like BuzzFeed, through um, you know, Buddy Media, when we were working with you guys, Twitter, Bitly, we were able to capture and identify the number of shares that we have. And that was more important of a metric for us than number of likes. Because a like is a one-off. A like is, I like you, I don't have to keep liking you. Um, so is there, a is there a loyalty component to that? Like, oh, when yeah. you talk about, one of the interesting things about everything you've done, whether it's the free fest with music or some of these programs, is it's all about how do you build on what you have? Where does that go in the future, in your mind? So I think we've done stuff, because the, the Virgin brand is best when you touch and feel it. It's one of those rare brands, like similar to a Red Bull, where the experience is really are really what's paramount of importance to get you the emotional connection to the brand. If um, we started with kind of using social as a way to reward our fans with, hey, you know, welcome to the pre-sale, here's some couple of hidden tickets for you, here's a golden ticket to this, here's Lady Gaga over here. What, where I think it's going now, which I love, is the idea, uh, it's less about the brand rewarding the fan, it's more about the brand enabling the fan to reward other fans. So when you get, and that's where you really start to build a sustainable community, and you really have a, you, you, you really thrive in the community where you empower others to shower love onto others. So what's others. an example of, you think, know, of that? I think the, one of the game-changing ones I love is what um, Nike Fuel did with Path. Um, if you guys remember, if you don't, it, Path, um, Nike Fuel has, you know, those wristbands that really, <laughs> clearly I don't use it, but um, basically the idea of a wristband that tracks your running, um, and, and Path was able to integrate that it could actually track your run. And the, the magic moment of that interaction was that when you're out running, 
um, and a friend of yours on path smiles at you or has some interaction with you via path, in your headphones you'd hear cheering, which would kind of get you over the hump as you're running. And, and that's just, that, those are- that's, Those little those are, Easter egg, like hidden in there. Right? I mean, that's really the specialness, the surprise and delight moments. Um, and we're working you know, with PATH to kind of figure out what's the virgin version of that, which is like probably a free shot on an airplane, but like uh, something that'd be um, just as fun. So that, that stuff I feel is the ability of getting fans in the community to reward other fans in the community and express affection, express emotion. You're gonna start seeing a lot more emotional response through tech portals. And I think that's, that's, I think, where BuzzFeed's heading as far as a lot of their moving away from snark and moving more to authentic, true emotion. I think you're gonna start seeing a lot more depth um, of engagement when you start to really unlock people's emotions online. So you've mentioned BuzzFeed twice. You obviously like them. Mm -hmm. What makes them so special or different than other you know, media properties, right? I mean, yeah. they're in the business of aggregating an audience and delivering that audience to people like you. Mm -hmm. they're, they're so, the innovation of, uh, they're reinventing, their platform is basically something that I feel is going to reinvent the advertising community as we know it. I, I really fundamentally believe that. I think a lot of companies are pieces in the puzzle, but they're the ones I think that translate virality um, to something measurable for, for managers. And I think when you look at BuzzFeed's um, ability, they're not about typical brand publishers that are trying to attract unique monthly views or trying to attract an audience to a site. They could give a crap about the site. They're more about, that's like saying, I'm only, if, if you lock the content to a site, that's like saying Jerry Seinfeld's only funny if you see him at Caroline's Comedy Club, right? I don't, I, I, I've said this before, I, I'm obsessed with the water coolers. That's where I wanna be in the conversations. And what BuzzFeed is excellent at is planting a piece of content that's so perfectly optimized for virality and then circulating it around all super shares on Facebook and Twitter, and now YouTube through their acquisition of yep. Z Frank. And now what, and in, in so doing, it's an organic way to find brands to express their voice. We've tripled down on, on BuzzFeed. We built our own newsroom of writers. We publish 12 times a day on virginmobilelive.com, which frankly is just a repository archive of all of our stuff. Our stuff permeates Pinterest, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, any, any platform. What percentage of your engagement happens in your owned properties? Well, we Like see, your websites or mobile? Oh, I mean, mobile's I mean, big for you, obviously. Well, m mo let's take mobile aside, because yeah. we have our app embedded on all phones, so that's not fair to say. But I'd say of our, within our own hosted, because we have a, we have a BuzzFeed channel, a Virgin Mobile Live BuzzFeed channel, but you're saying, does I that mean, count? like your website versus distributed network. Is it 95% no, outside your oh, website? Yeah, absolutely. I would say 90 to 95% so, of our traffic. And the last question I'm gonna ask about the operational side, how do you staff that? Like, what is your specific staff? I get this question every day. Yeah, like, yeah. how do I operationalize it? How do I do this well, within I, my organization? You can do it with one person and one killer agency. Um, I have the luxury of having two people who do, and by the way, this stuff to brand publishing and getting your voice out there, you don't have to be virgin. GE is doing it on, on BuzzFeed doing a great as well. job, yeah. Yeah, they're doing a great job. And, I think that you can do it with um, you know, one to two people and an agency. And by the way, all this stuff costs under a million bucks. It's, you, know, you can really do it and gain um, bang for the buck. And we're now seeing results in handset sales. So we're seeing that if you, our content is like the, the opening joke of an address, of a speech, where we warm you, right? And then after that, you hear that joke, you're more willing to be retargeted and see an ad three sites later that will invite you in, in, as a cold prospect to a warm prospect to an actual. It, it builds a relationship. Yeah. It builds a familiarity. And, and so it's interesting that you haven't, you know, and we're about 15 minutes into this, you haven't mentioned Facebook once. Hmm. Can you talk about Facebook? I think um, no, Facebook is definitely. You don't have to, but <laughs> it, was, it was just interesting that you haven't I think, mentioned it. I, I think I look at the different portals. This is so funny, it's like rocking like a boat. Um, this, uh, I think Facebook. I hope you fall over. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook is like um, the mass scale engine of super sharing. So it's, it's what gets me to meet my numbers to show that I've made my metrics. 
But what gets me in the press is the stuff that you do with Path or with Twitter. I think Twitter right So it's your tonnage. It's, yeah. It's, I think for me it's tonnage. I know that they are, they're, they've got a lot of products kind of out there that are, you know, that they're trying to innovate in the mobile space and they're trying to crack that code. I have seen the new products coming out from Twitter are um, dazzling and I'm really excited to kind of sink my teeth into them in, in Q4 and Q1. Um, and these are not like, I, I, I think like when you get in, I'm glad that they're moving away from just like the, the sponsored post kind of thing. We never would participate in that because I don't want everybody. I want select people. I'm less about getting a million fans on Facebook. Our Facebook page is only like four, you know, around 400,000, but the virality that they have at peak times is, you know, upwards around 10%. So I, I'm more obsessed with depth of engagement uh, on sites like Path um, and Twitter and using Facebook, uh, Facebook to kind of spread, evangelize the message across more. And have you used custom audiences at all? Because you have a big database of customers. Yeah, we, we And any of, results from that? Open graphing, actually Facebook is valuable for a lot of the open graphing to really kind of get a sample set of people that are sweet spot for us. So we're early days in trialing a lot of that stuff because um, we, and it's really just very rudimentary interests and um, demographics and ethnographics that are important to us. Um, I definitely want to head there. We're not totally there yet. So we didn't talk about this question, but how about one prediction in terms of where things are going and you know, what are we going to be talking about in two years? I think in two years, the world will be less around a CPM, traditional CPM basis of advertising and pricing your content. And I think, finally, we will get to a point where you pay for the depth of engagement that you get. So I think CPMs, are, CPMs are, will be irrelevant. A display ad, the tonnage of a display ad will just be, will, will fall by the wayside as people really start pricing media based on the anticipated engagement that media will warrant. And that, that will be based on what's truly viral about the content. And, and let me be clear, there's a big difference between what's funny and what's shareable. If there's nothing else you take away from today, there's a big difference between what's funny and what's shareable. Funny, not, not everything funny will go viral, and that's because something shareable has that added emotional context to say, wow, this is really a reflection of me and my belief system. I want my world to see this. And that, to me, is what's the big difference is that There'll be a premium on good, badass content, and it'll be priced accordingly. And that's the last word. Thank you, Ron. Thanks. Thanks.